Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon VGC 2019 Battle Series. I hope you're all well, had a great weekend and are looking forward to kicking off with a brand new team on the channel today. Thank you so much for tuning in as well and I just need to give each and every one of you a huge big shout out for all the votes, comments and suggestions for a new team played on the channel this week. I put a poll up on the YouTube channel on Tuesday last week and asked you guys what you'd like to play. We've had a flurry of comments as well and they've all been amazing but it came back unanimous that you guys would like to see a Mega Manetric team put together. So this is what you can see on your screen in front of you right now. It's a little bit different. As always, the team is down in the description below. There is a poker pace and a roll pace, but before we get into anything, I will just quickly go over the team for you guys. So we've got the Manetric, which is going to be the Mega of the team, going to be able to Mega Evolve, has Lightning Rod, turns into Intimidate. We've got Volt Switch on there, Snarl, and then we've got Hidden Power Water as well to complement that Kyogre to help us snipe those Primal Groudons. If we're in a nice position to be able to do that, you could also go something like Eerie Impulse but I feel in this core if we've got more options to deal with Primal Groudon the better because we haven't got too much ground immunity here so having that option there will really help us alleviate that issue to some extent and then we've got the Lunala it's going to have the Z move it's going to have its signature Z move the Lunalium Z we've got Roar on there it's a deterrent against Xerneas if it decides to Geomancy you've got a way to roar it out it also kind of helps us if we want to roar out our own Kyogre to help with rather control or intimidate cycling or psychic terrain support or anything like that so we've got that there we've got tailwind as well to support that Kyogre if we can get Kyogre into a tailwind with its weather up then we can be very very disruptive to our opponents and it's a really powerful kind of common strategy that we see quite a lot and we've got the moon guys beam and the side shock there and um, then we've got the Kyogre we've got a bulkier Kyogre with how we want to operate within this team now I did think about running a more fast defensive Kyogre in this team but with how we want it to operate it's going to be switching in a lot we need that bulk to help it operate a little bit better and we haven't got dual intimidate here so against things like Rayquaza that are throwing out this big dragon sense it does help us out a little bit more just being that bit more bulky here and we've got Tapu Lele. it's going to be scarfed it's going to complement the, the Lunala there with its psychic terrain so we've got more powerful side shocks we've got magic room on there to help us again against opposing Xerneas if we want to set up because if they do get set up this team really is quite vulnerable to that setup so denying the setup is very important for this team we've got to keep that in mind when we're playing games this week so the magic room there we've got skill swap it complements the Kyogre if we're in a position where we've got Lele Kyogre out in the field and we're worried about weather disruption from our opponent's side then we can easy skill swap get an advantage and throw out those water type attacks once again then we've got Psychic and Moonblast is just the coverage moves there and Tabu Lele as we know does really well at covering things like Ultra Necrozma, Rayquaza and Salamence, things that do give us a little bit of an issue if we don't check them and Tabulela does that perfectly. Then we've got Cartana. Now the one thing about Cartana was I really wanted the Focus Sash on there. We've already got the Z move elsewhere on the team and you know we could go the Z move there but Cartana I was like oh, I just want to prolong its 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 ability on the field. Focus Sash does that we can at least take one big attack and we can still do some damage back get maybe a good return but obviously we've got the Hydreigon in the team that gives us some ground and Immunity, and I feel like we cannot calc against any fairy type attacks with Hydreigon so it really needs that focus I should not want to go down a route where we're completely bulking it out it makes it pretty useless offensively whereas the focus Ash allows it to perform that role it has got tailwind so a second speed control setter on the team and it does give us some nice coverage elsewhere for things that we might otherwise struggle a little bit against so coming back to the Cartana though that is why we've chose the psychic seed we've given a really bulky set so it kind of replicates an assault vest but we've got the added bonus of having the protect there on it as well so Cortana in practice has been doing really well now I went through a bunch of different teams with Mega Manetric and this is one that I kind of settled on this is one I feel like we can do very well with in the format so hopefully this week on the channel is going to be a lot of fun and we'll probably change things up next week so do keep your comments coming for what you'd like to see mixed up with this team and we can add those in as we finish up with the team in the call next week before we move on to something else but the Cortana Psychic Seed, it's going to be able to take a bunch of attacks and do some really nice work, especially attacks things like Nilego that we may struggle against if we can't get our Psychic terrain working and things like that. So, 
that is the team in a nutshell as always it is down in the description below there is a raw paste poker paste check it out try it out and if you do try it out do as always let me know what your thoughts are on the team and if you do try it out and it inspires any thoughts for yourself then obviously let me know how you get on with that as well it's quite nice to see a team like this where we haven't got Incinero and Tapu Fini in for a change so just mixing it up a little bit on the channel this week and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it at home but without further ado let's get into it today and uh, if you do enjoy this content guys as always do drop a like on the video it does really help the channel out a lot do subscribe to the channel as well for more Pokemon content and do leave your comments because I love hearing from you as you know and just your thoughts on the team on the episodes on anything that's been going on outside of the episodes today uh, events that you've been attending how you've been getting on with certain Pokemon calls anything like that and I will make sure to get back to you as soon as possible it's hectic at the minute going on at home and things are settling down so I should be able to get back to you all as soon as I can but I do appreciate all the support and uh, the comments that I get but we've got a first opponent of the episode so we'll jump straight into team preview and our first opponent today is kicking off with a team of Salamence, Kyogre, Bronzong, Tapu Koko, Gengar and Groudon. So we've got that dual primal combination there. We've got the Mega Gengar, probably the Mega of the team. Kind of dual Megas as well between the Salamence and the Gengar. And then we've got the Trick Room setters on the team. With the Salamence, it's got that Intimidate support and the Bronzong with its... Uh, trick Room. So how are we going to deal with this? You know, like straight away Lunala jumps out of me and says yes choose me but you've got to worry about that type of coco um, it can throw out a dazzling gleam so then the Gengar will outspeed Alunala and do some decent damage there so I do probably want to check the Gengar with the Tapu Lele it makes a lot of sense even if we haven't got our terrain set up and then the Lunala kind of covers the other things on the team now what else do we want to bring uh, Cortana could be good here uh, Minetric could also be decent with its fake out so, uh, intimidate support I should say we definitely want our own Kyogre I feel but then I think it's a toss up between Cortana and Hydreigon. Hydreigon could be actually really good here if we can get rid of the Tapu Koko early doors so I'm kind of leaning more towards that if I'm honest um, yeah we'll bring Hydreigon let's go for it so we'll get into this first one today and if guys if you're wondering why my eyes are all puffy and I'm sounding a bit nasally it's because my hair fever at the minute is absolutely killing me um, the, the pollen count at the minute must be ridiculous um, and I don't normally suffer as bad but I've been really suffering the last two days so if I'm a bit nasally and not myself and I look a bit puffy and uh, around the eyes then that is the reason why um, so hopefully it doesn't come across too bad in the video but yeah, hair fever is horrible. I really sympathize with any of you guys out there that do have it or any other allergies that affect you like this. Like, I walk up in the middle of the night and my eyes are just like throbbing. But we are going to see my opponent lead out with Tapu Koko and Gengar here. So, um, I mean, the psychic into the Gengar is pretty obvious. But I kind of don't want to leave it unchecked because it then has an easy way to, um, to get rid of our Lunala. Um, one thing we could potentially do is set up a Tailwind here, but it, I feel like when you're bringing the Gengar, the, you're kind of more probably inclined to have the Bronzong in the back, um, although Groudon and Kyogre could also be in the back as well, so the Tailwind could be good, but we could use this opportunity to just nuke the, um, the Tapu Koko, but <sighs> Tailwind here is really appealing, and I think I'd probably prefer to go for a Tailwind rather than anything else, so we'll go for that. And we'll check the Gengar, like I say, with this Psychic, which should be able to take it down, even out of terrain. So there we go, Gengar going to Mega Evolve, unless it's a, like a, a really bulky Mega Gengar. But it does just protect, it's kind of obvious there, and we'll see this Coco maybe go for a Z-move. But if it does, um, then we do get a Tailwind up. I'm just going to see an Electro Web, which is fine, because we do get a Tailwind set. And then this next turn, we can attack into the Coco. Um, and go for that Psychic into the Gengar, although the Gengar might switch out this next turn. So that's something we've got to keep in mind. So the double up into the Coco might be a bit more appealing. There's not really anything my opponent has to switch into a Psychic though, if this Gengar does switch out, except the Bronzong. Um, so we could go for a Moongeist Beam. Oh, I just worry about the Coco being either a Salt Vest or Sashed. I think that's the one thing that I, I do worry about a little bit. Um, and that's why I kind of want to go Moon Guys Beam into that, that slot. 
uh, rather than the Z-move and preserve the Z-move for later on in this match. Yeah, we'll go for it because I do expect it to be sashed, Coco, and I just don't want to waste the Z-move into it just yet. The Gengar is going to switch out, probably see Bronzong. Oh, Kyogre come in, if you don't mind. We'll probably see another Electro Web from this Coco, but we will get a Psychic into this Kyogre. Um, and my opponent needs to get two more Electro Webs off to actually start up at speeding us now. Well, the Lele anyway. And I think the nice thing about getting this damage off now is that we may put the Kyogre into Z move range um, by preserving it at least. And even after this Electro Web, it'll just nullify our Tailwind, so we should still be faster than what my opponent can throw out. We do get the Moogas Beam, it doesn't quite take the Coco down, but. At the next turn, Lele will still outspeed the Coco because of our Tailwind, and we can Z move into the Kyogre. It's whether or not the Kyogre protects, so that's the that's the big thing, I think. Um, and we've got to be careful about when our Tailwind does pitter out. So, let's see, we've got how many turns? Two more turns, so we're pretty safe at the minute if that Gengar does come in. Um, we'll go for the Psychic into the Coco, and then the Z move into the Kyogre. Let's see if we can take it. Ah, Tapu Koko actually protecting. That's interesting. There's the Psychic. And here we go. Gonna get the Z-move. One problem about running the Z-move is, obviously, I've got to cut this out every time we use it. And we'll probably be using it most matches. So it's a little bit extra work, but it's fine. So we'll be right back when we come into the Kyogre slot. And hopefully we can pick up that KO there. So into the Kyogre we go. Is it going to be enough to pick up the knockout though? It's going to be close I think. Ah, we get it. So that's good. That's at least one thing down. Ooh, we get a critical hit. Would have been interesting to see if we got it otherwise. Uh, Gengar might come back in now. I'd imagine the Gengar probably protects um, this next turn to stall out our Tailwind. Um, so we can get rid of the, yeah, we can get rid of the Coco now. Probably want to switch Lunala out. It's a, it's a bit of a shame that our, our terrain, um, our Shadow Shield has been broken. But, I mean, we do have Hydreigon, and that's, that's the beauty. Like, once we get rid of the Coco, which we can do now. Coco actually going to switch out. Groudon going to hit the field. So there's no Bronze on in the back, just as dual primals. And Hydreigon really not a bad option to have here. The problem is that the Lele is going to be a uh, prime target for this Gengar the next turn. Um, but we do have a Hydreigon on the field because of the ghost typing of Lunala. We're not trapped in. Um, I wonder if the Gengar actually attacks here. It'd be interesting to see if it does. Thinking that it can outspeed us. Nah. My opponent playing it safe. And the Psychic into the Groudon's quite nice here, regardless. So, um, problem is, the Lele's definitely going to go down this next turn. Um, but we do check, we do check this, this Gengar with the Dark Pulse. Uh, the, the, the other thing is, what we could do is probably just go for another Tailwind while we've got the opportunity to, because it's going to really help set up our Kyogre when it comes onto the field uh, to get around that Tapu Koko, which otherwise would be a huge problem for us. So there's the Shadow Ball into the Lele. Uh, it will go down, but this if we get our Tailwind up, which we should do, uh, this will open the door for Kyogre to come in and then close this game out for us. So Hydreigon doing all the work here. And because we've got the Focus Sash as well, we don't need to worry about whatever. Even Dragon Claw coming out. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, Hydreigon not procking that. But uh, yeah, now I think it's fine because we get Kyogre in. And we're in such a nice position now to, to pick up. Like the, the Tapu Koko probably comes in um, for the Groudon what I would imagine because you probably want to try sack the Coco get yeah yeah but mm, I still think we'll be all right as long as we can kind of utilize our tailwind turns effectively that's what we need to do like dog pulse the Gengar water spout um, because then when the Groudon comes back in we've still got access to ice beam and earth power which would be more than enough yeah, we're going to see this, and then the Protect on the Gengar for sure. Makes sense just to sack the Coco like this, though. So it's not over, over. Um, we've still got to... Yeah. But I mean, even when the Groudon comes back in this next turn, we can just Dark Pulse the Gengar. It has to get his other Protect to get around this. 
um, and we can ice beam the Groudon regardless which puts it kind of in range and if the Gengar fails the double protect this next turn then uh, it will go down to a dog pulse for sure so Hydreigon doing some work which is nice for us to kick off today um, shame that we haven't brought Manetric yet but we've still got one more game to go after this so hopefully we can bring it then the Groudon does enter the battlefield I think even now like Kyogre should be able to deal with the Groudon with Ice Beam effectively uh, we should take it will take three Precipice Blades to get us. Um, and like I say, the Groudon, uh, the Gengar needs to go for a double protect. The Groudon needs to Dragon Claw the Hydreigon here. But we're not going to see the double protect here. We're going to see the Dark Pulse into the Gengar. It is going to be more than enough. And uh, we'll see what this Groudon goes for. If it goes for a Precipice Blades because it's concentrating down onto the Kyogre. It's kind of locked because then you're not concentrating down on the Hydreigon, which leaves us open for an Earth Power the next turn. So, um, Hydreigon doing a really nice job here, especially just taking that opportunity to get the Tailwind up when we needed to. And just having that added security of the Focus Sash there really helps us out. So, I'm um, going to be able to close this one up very nicely here with an Ice Beam and a Earth Power. We don't even need to worry about switching out at this point. Um, and there's the forfeit. So very good game to my opponent. Nice way for us to kick off today. So that's very good. Um, nice to get the Hydreigon going as well. Because it's one of those Pokemon I think. That it does have a hard time in the Ultra Series. Especially with all the fairy types going around. Scoff, Tapu Lele, Xerneas. But when you don't see those sort of things. And you can eliminate them. Then it does, it does a really good job. It really does. It's such a great Pokemon. Um, it's done so well in past formats. It's uh, It'd be nice to see it be able to get some limelight in the ultra series but might be a bit too far for it to go we'll hop over into our main screen while we await our next opponent of the episode so hopefully it's not too long and we'll click out of trainer music because i've heard people don't like trainer music they've heard it far too many times but we'll go with necrozma vision 2 because why not why not i've kind of been good with necrozma vision 2 recently i've kind of held off putting Playing it too much, maybe once or twice a week. But we've got an next opponent from Japan, 1572 rated player, so I'll hop straight into team preview. Okay, so our next opponent today is running a team of Groudon, Incineroar, Salamence, Tapu Fini, Xerneas, and Thunderous Incarnate. So, uh, we've got that Zerndon build. It's quite it's quite standard, other than the Thunderous there. That's uh, going to be a bit of a problem for our team to deal with but right I think Lunala is still going to be good here it's a good countermeasure to um, <sighs> the opposing Xerneas if it does decide to set up um, maybe we go maybe we go Kyogre as well um, initially although Manetric could be good in this match um, just to deter the, the Thunderous from throwing out any big electric type attacks uh, it's probably going to go taunt though and that's kind of why I want to have Lele in the back to switch in rather than anything else um, do we want Minetric here I mean it's good against Tapu Fini but then Cortana is just as good as well so we could actually bring Kyogre Tapu Lele in the back and then Cortana yeah I think I like that so we'll lock in with that We'll forego Hydreigon in this match because the Xerneas pressure there. Um, other than the Xerneas though, I mean, Hydreigon does really well, but there's going to be, op like if my opponent brings Xerneas, it's going to sit on the field, it's going to be firing out attacks, and that locks you out bringing really Hydreigon onto the field. Um, and I think by leading Kyogre with Lunala, we should put enough pressure onto the Incineroar to kind of make it think twice about staying in because of the potential switch out into Tapu Lele, but we're going to see Incineroar Groudon. Now, if my opponent's running a faster Groudon, we're going to be in an extremely strong position going into this first turn. Uh, we do have the fake out to worry about from the Incineroar, of course, um, which is cycled off right now, but we'll see who Primal reverts first. I've got to imagine the Groudon will, yeah, so we'll get our rain up. Puts us in a nice position, because we've got that option to switch in Tapu Lele, turn one, and just Water Spout. And, and you know the ground will probably get a precipice blades off but at the same time um, we'll get some good damage onto both targets 
I'm kind of tempted just to do that really. Preserve Lunala as well for later in this match if I can. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. There's not many times where you get yourself in a position like this. So, yeah, we'll just switch in Lele and go Water Spout. Like, even after a Precipice Blades, we should be in a, a good enough spot to take down the Groudon if it decides to stay in. I doubt it does. I think it would switch out. I think the Incineroar as well probably go fake out into the Kyogre here. So if we can catch that, that would be amazing. And then anything coming in on a switch in, uh, we'll be able to we'll be able to nuke with a water spot here. So we'll switch good old Lunara out. We'll keep the bat for later. There's Lele coming onto the field. We'll activate this psychic terrain. Now we know we're gonna be taking a precipice blaze from the Browdon. I think if it stays in. There's a fake out, yep. And oh! Oh, it's a speed tie. <laughs> oh, wow. Unless, hmm, it has to be a speed tie. There's no way the Groudon goes for a roll there. Let me take a massive advantage, like so early on in this game. Okay. Xerneas and... What are we going to say? Xerneas and Salamence? There's the Zern. There is the Xerneas, we can't roar it out though, that's the thing, that's going to be the type of thingy. So we'll get rid of our Psychic Terrain, but at this point, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, how are we going to get around this? Uh, well, we need to, I think, hmm, good Magic Room. And Water Spout. It gives us a bit more room to operate. Uh, do we do that? Water spout. So I kind of want, like, we've got Cartana in the back, which will deal with these pretty effectively, but we need to get our Psychic Terrain out in the field. And if we Magic Room, we can't utilize our, we can't utilize our Psychic Terrain, uh, our Psychic Seed, which makes it a bit harder. So, um, do we just double attack the Xerneas, I think, here? Yeah. And then the next turn, switch. If we get a special defense drop, that would be huge. Yeah, there's a Geomancy. There's nothing we can do to really stop this, but we'll get enough damage onto it. All we need to do is try and maneuver a board position around where we can get our Lele back onto the field with the Psychic Train and then get caught on or out, um, and then deal with both of these things pretty, pretty effectively. But we need that Psychic Seed boost, and you've got to think twice about using the Magic Room, because <sighs> utilizing Magic Room would have been really great. It would have given us a, an extra turn, but um, it's not going to be enough to um, to effectively deal with how we needed to. So we're going to go get Lunala in. Um, do we protect Kyogre? Yeah, let's protect Kyogre here. Because maybe the Xerneas, it's not going to like taking a Scald at this point. But it's just all about now getting the Cartana onto the field. Uh, the Finney's definitely in Leaf Blade range. Um, so we've got that. Okay. Xenia's actually protecting here. It's going to protect on our Kyogre Protect. We're going to see. Finney go for. Hmm. Icy Wind. Okay. It will break our Shadow Shield, which does make Lunala a bit more vulnerable. Um, but I feel like you have to go Dazzling Gleam here, because you're either going to take a Z-move from Lunala. Um, or you're going to take a Scald from Kyogre. And although we can't burn it, Scald's still going to do a decent amount of damage, even after these boosts. And I would even say it might be in range. It would be very close. I'm going to see a Moonblast. It's going to be into Lunala. So we will lose Lunala here. It's fine. It's a shame we lost our Shadow Shield. Um, and there's a Scald. If we could, yeah, come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, it's so close. So close. So close. Heal pulse. Uh, oh, no. That's not so good. So I think now what we'll do is... Uh, we will get uh, Tapu Lele onto the field. I don't want to bring Cortana out until it's uh, until I, I lose something. Uh, we'll go for a, a psychic into. Did we go into the. Hmm. There's 
no point. Like, we could, could we, mm. we could skill swap the Xerneas, take away its Variora boost. Um, and just protect. And if Lele, ah, uh, but when we're locked in, it's, nah, we'll be better off just Psychic into, we're just going to proc a berry on the Finny. It's definitely Leaf Blade range, you want to leave that alone. I'm just going to Psychic into the Xerneas here, and I'm just going to go for a Psychic there. If we lose Lele, then that's fine. Because that opens the door for Cartana to come in. Yeah, Moonblast. Oh, it's into the Kyogre, so we'll get this Psychic off. Heal Pulse. Of course, we're going to continue to see that, I think. But that's alright, because we just want to keep Xerneas in a position where it's... You're probably going to chase down the Kyogre now, I think. I think that's what we'll do. That's what you would do, I'd imagine. <sighs> hmm. Moonblast into Kyogre. No, into Lele. Huh. We could pick up a burn here, you know. And although you will get the heal pulse off with the Finny. If we get a burn, that would be huge. Burn! Burn! Excellent. Us. Now we've got to make a little bit of a, a decision. Um, we get Cartana onto the field. Do we attack the Xerneas or do we get the Beast Boost attacking the Finny? Because there's a part of me that would think maybe you go for the Cartana with the Xerneas, uh, but maybe there's a part of me that thinks you probably protect. Because I don't think we take two moon blasts. That's the thing. Let's get rid of the Finny. Let's get rid of that heal pulse support. Yeah, they're going for that protect. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, they want to try and icy wind us. But this will be more than enough to take down the Finny. Get a beast boost, and now we lock the game. I think my opponent there needed to attack. And you think you, you just need to attack the Cartana um, to deal with it. Uh, because now this Cartana, as we'll hopefully see, it will take a Moonblast pretty comfortably. Um, and we do have the Protect if we wanted to, but I think a Smart Strike plus one is going to be more than enough to take down this Xerneas. But there's a, like, yeah, so Moonblast into Cartana, Psychic Seed boost, yeah I mean we take that pretty well, Smart Strike plus one, that's why I think he needed to double, like attack it last turn because you do that, oh wow, actually takes it, plus one, bulky zone, and the Scald, enough to pick up the KO there, so I think a little bit, I can see where my opponent was coming from there because they want to try and catch out us targeting the, the Xerneas, but at that stage it's like, the Tapu Fini is so disruptive to what we're trying to do, and it's kind of obvious that you would want to go for that, that speed controller. I think you need to attack into Cartana. If you do that, then um, we get rid of the Finny, but then you, you can dazzle the next turn, and you take away any kind of threat from the Cartana uh, by doing that anyway. But good games. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's games. Two, two wins to kick us off today, so that's good. That's good progress. And uh, I hope to continue that for the rest of the week. We've seen a nice few options from the team. We haven't really seen very much of the Mega Manetric, which is the main the main man of the team. So hopefully going into tomorrow's episode, we'll see a bit more from Manetric as we go through this week. Um, thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I look forward to hearing your comments and hearing from you all very soon. And uh, we'll be back with another episode tomorrow. So until then, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.